What up, y'all? Rap Gritty Gear, and it's about that time to talk about Kendrick Lamar. That's right, y'all. After a long hiatus, Kung Fu Kenny returns with an explosive new joint to get the people talking. So it's time to put on our thinking caps and ruminate over the deep complexities of a lyrical mastermind. Oh, uh, sorry, folks. I thought I muted my phone, but uh, let me check this text real quick, see what's up. No, Kendrick. Do future song instead. It's better for SEO because it's higher on the charts besides telling people that a great song by a great rapper is great isn't really that funny. What? Wait, who sent this? What's their info? Maybe the algorithm that gets eyes on the videos that pay your salary. Oh, okay. Well, I, I do enjoy not being homeless, so I, I, I guess I'm doing the future song now. But if you'd like to help make this less of an issue in the future, hit up that Rap Critic Patreon, where your support allows you to vote on future episodes. Then you guys can decide what I review, and then we'll see which song is really popular with the people. Well, okay, well, let's take off our thinking caps and put on our riffing on a popular song caps, I guess. Because, yeah, I, I bet it's just going to be the typical future Drake affair about how they're too cool and rich to have any real problems and blah, blah, blah. Early in the morning, late at night. It don't even matter what time it is. Oh, okay, then well, maybe it's not that. Maybe instead it's gonna be some Thugs Need Love 2 song where they just write about a girl every now and then in between lyrics about how rich they are, right? President Rollin. Ah, I knew it. Gotta brag about the Patek or the Philippe or whatever other expensive designer you have to make like 50 kajillion dollars to even know or care about. No real artistic expression, no human vulnerability. I get my bond when I do drugs. When you drunk, you tell me exactly how you feel. Oh, well, that lyric was the literal opposite of what I was expecting. Annoying the sounds of the storm when it comes. She understand I can't take her everywhere, nigga, going. Uh, okay, yeah, so I guess this is going to be a song with some substance to it. I mean, it seems to be one of the few things rappers can be real about, uh, how much they feel like assholes for leaving their loved ones behind to make money touring, but hey, it still has the potential to work if they put the effort in. I've been in the field like the children of the corn. I can hear your tears when they drop over the phone. Already we've got some serviceable wordplay, illustrating his hustle as a businessman uh, put up against the parallel of what's happening at home. The quiet, intimate scenario of him hearing the subtle sounds of teardrops hitting the phone on the other end. The emotional price to pay for his success. I mean, for a rapper like Future, that's a surprisingly poetic image. And it serves as a visual for what grief and heartbreak looks like in 2022, where smartphones are part of our everyday. <laughs> I really wanted to do that Kendrick song. Damn you, algorithm! And it's an image that's complemented by the sampled singer Thames in the background, personifying the forlorn lover who stays faithful despite the emotional turmoil. <laughs> well, this isn't fun. I'm just being nice to a song that's popular. Oh, I know. <laughs> Maybe the teardrops he's hearing are actually the sound of her quietly texting her side piece. All right, uh, let me not be pointlessly mean. I'll give them the artistic benefit of the doubt here. Every time I sip on codeine, I get wrong. And there's a recurring theme on here about only being honest when you're inebriated. Which is quite a testament to the shittiness of both of their insecurities when only the drunk man can speak the sober man's mind. And I've noticed the two motifs on the song about tears on the phone and only being honest when you're wasted that reoccur on the track. I can hear your tears when they drop over the phone, over the phone dropping tears. Every time I sip on codeine, I get vulnerable. I get my vulnerable when I do tears. And actually really enjoy that. Because they're not worded the exact same way each time, so it doesn't come across as repetitive. It makes the song feel more like a rotating meditation on their relationship. In fact, the song doesn't feel like it has as much a solid structure of verse, hook, verse as much as it feels like it's just wallowing in this muck of that bleary-eyed melancholy, with each lyric seeming like it's genuinely bubbling up from that emotional place. And I'd say that's doubly true for Drake's verse. I sit on my balcony and wonder how you're feeling. I got a career to taste my time away from women. The slightly offbeat delivery feeling like cascading stream of conscious thoughts that dip into bitterly self-aware moments. I be on your line, feelings flowing like a river. Like this lyric, noting how his feelings are flowing like a river while his lackadaisical delivery indeed imitates the feel of a loosely flowing river. I cannot convince you that I love you for a living. Or a line like this, which is funny because as a dude who has a plethora of love ballads under his belt, convincing women that he loves them is pretty much what he does for a living. But at the same time, acknowledging that actually having to constantly do that for a real person would legit be pretty exhausting. Like, if you perpetually feel you have to do things to prove you love someone, it kind of starts to feel like a who are you trying to convince scenario after a while, you know? And while most of the song feels like it's hitting general universal feelings of unease in a tumultuous relationship, this lyric feels like a very specific detail. Why you introduce us if you knew that you was with him? Made me shake his hand, we all been fucking for a minute. 
Like, this is the kind of disturbingly specific information that makes me almost feel like I'm intruding by listening to it. Every time I hear this lyric, I feel like I need to back away and just go like, oh, okay, you, you guys deal with that. I'm going to go into the other room now. Although my earlier theory about her texting her side piece certainly holds more water now. And I like how he ends the verse on yet another self-referential flip. Try to bring the best out you, guess I'm not an influential, guess I'm not the one that's mad for you. A lyric that kind of straddles the line between egotism and earnestness. It initially comes across as the typical playboy arrogance he's known for, but in light of the context of the song, it feels more wounded and defensive. Clearly bothered that the closeness he had to this girl wound up flipped around against him, dressing down his status as a celebrity whose ability to influence the music scene around him doesn't exactly translate into his interpersonal relationships. I mean, she's introducing him to new partners, putting up new relationship boundaries that put him on the outside looking in, and lamenting that maybe he didn't bring the best out of her from the way she seems to be tacitly treating him like a scrub. Supposed to be a dog, but you don't put me in a kennel. I mean, I'm not usually the one to offer the most sympathy to two rappers that make more money off one song than the average person makes in a decade, but it, it, with this joint, Drake and Future really draw on their toxic rapper characteristics in a way that exposes the imperfections that dog their romantic partnerships. So uh, while they have the respect and veneration of influence in the rap game and all the cool status that that implies, once you pull back the facade on a song like this, it shows how a dude who sets the trends and is seen as this ineffable symbol of coolness can still be mentally torn down by a woman who's just a little cooler than he anticipated. Like, damn. Was a bad bitch killed the hype beast. Well, overall, I'd have to give this one a 4 out of 5. The emotion of the lyrics is palpable, and the music perfectly encapsulates the mood, giving us a glimpse into the hearts of two men who may project themselves as high-status untouchables, but at the end of the day are still human beings attempting to communicate their experiences. And when they can do it in a way that pushes past their personas to relate those similar feelings everyone gets in a relationship that may be on the outs, it, it can still strike a nerve as a dope artistic achievement. Well, that's my analysis of the song, but before we wrap up, let's shoot it to the Patreon What You Think section, where $5 patrons can comment on the song I'm reviewing, and if I like it, positive or negative. I'll include it here. Patron Life is Strange says, Ugh, by far the worst future song yet. Goddamn, eh, that's cold blooded. He sounds as lazy and strung out slash high as ever. This track is just so utterly lifeless and dull. God dang. Drake also phones it in as the second verse has some of the worst forced rhymes I've heard in a while. Women live in minute swimmer. Okay, yeah, no, no, that was definitely bad. But yeah, I, I totally get that. I, I noticed that. But, you know, I felt the song was doing enough to be able to make me look past it. You know what I mean? Uh, the lyrics also come off as possessive and kind of creepy. Yeah, no, I'm not going to argue with that one. I definitely see where that's coming from. Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like because it helps. Comment if you have something to say because it helps even more. And hit the subscribe and the bell because it helps the most. Oh, and don't forget to check out my album and movie review podcast, Going Off and Review Anew. We're on the album podcast. We'll be getting to that new Drake album. And on the movie one, we're currently going through Quentin Tarantino's filmography. Follow me on Twitch to check out my music and gaming streams. Follow my social media pages to know when those streams are happening. And of course, do ongoing support on Patreon to join the RC Discord to chat with me and fellow fans. Or do one-time Kofi donations to make movie songs or stream requests. So check all that fun stuff out and I'll catch you next time. Peace.